I just like to quickly mention at the start of this video that I am now on Patreon, where from $2 a month you can help support me create more content along the lines of this video. Your support will be greatly appreciated. To find out more, why not follow the links in the video description today and find out what exclusive perks you can receive. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Awesome Amigo OS. In this second part, I thought we'd look at another unremarked part, but very clever part of the Amiga operating system that has been there since version 2, released in 1990. Commodities do not work with the versions of Amiga OS prior to version 2.0, so for those of you eulogising version 1.2 and 1.3, I'm afraid you're just going to need to upgrade. <laughs> Anyway, prior to version 2.0 of the Amiga operating system, applications could hook into input events, say from the mouse or the keyboard, or perhaps other peripherals. And they could use these input events to determine sort of the way that the system reacted to them. For example, they could create a screen blank if the mouse wasn't moved for a while, or perhaps hotkeys. Amiga OS 2.0 changed this by introducing commodities, which provided a much cleaner way for these to be implemented. This ensured that these utilities, known as commodities, would not clash with each other, ensuring that there was system compliance throughout the whole design. Commodities can create screen blankers, modify the way that the operating system actually responds to your mouse clicks, creating shortcut keys, and a heck of a lot more. They are a clean way to enhance your usage of the Amiga operating system. If programmed correctly, there is nothing hacky about commodities at all. In fact, Commodore intended them to be used the way that many of them actually work, enhancing the way that the operating system looks and works. So for example, we have this very simple click to front commodity here, and this allows window management to be made a lot easier by allow double clicking to the front. The key to managing your commodities is through an application called Exchange. Now Exchange can be found in your tools drawer and then commodities drawers on Amiga OS 2.1 or later, or within the utilities drawer on versions up to and including 2.05. Opening Exchange will reveal the commodities that are currently running and provide an easy interface to either disable the commodity temporarily or deactivate it entirely. So where are the Amiga's default commodities that come with Workbench? Well these are either inside your tools drawer on your hard disk or on your floppy disk systems inside your extras disk inside the tools drawer on there. Commodities can also be configured to change their behaviour in settings in some instances. These are configured usually through using the tool types. To recap quickly, tool types are accessed by clicking the commodities icon in Workbench, going to the icons menu and choosing information. These act as simple configuration options for the commodity and indeed all of Amiga Workbench applications or tools in Amiga parlance will use this. Think of it as being a bit like an INI file or a small registry setting. These can be set whether the commodity needs the modifier key to be pressed for its behaviour to be initiated, for example. For example, click to front allows you to set the qualifier to one of the Alt or Amiga keys or other keys that you have on your keyboard, meaning that to activate it, not only will you need to double click but perhaps hold down a key press at the same time, although I prefer to leave this set as qualifier equals none so a simple double click will activate it so that I can just double click anywhere within a window that there isn't a gadget and the window will be brought to the front. So how can we activate click to front or any commodity on booting workbench? Simple, just drag and drop your commodities tool icon into your workbench's workbench startup drawer. Now it will start every time you reboot your Amiga. However, some commodities will open up a little interface when your Amiga starts when doing this. For example, the blanker tool, which is a screen blanker, will do just this. It's a bit messy having to close the window each time you boot your Amiga. So how can we prevent this? Well, pretty much any compliant commodity will understand a simple tool type that is known as CX underscore pop-up equals no. This will ensure that this settings window will not open when you boot your Amiga when this commodity is located in your Workbench Startup folder. You can also use the Exchange utility. This will allow you to bring up the interface for that commodity and change its settings. You may sometimes find there is a setting in here to disable the pop-up on starting. 
You'll also notice that commodities, including Exchange itself, allows you to bring up their user interface using a keyboard shortcut. This will allow you to pop up the settings anytime without having to use the Exchange utility. For example, for Blanca, I have it set to Control, Alt and B. You can also use the F key tool, which is built into the Amiga operating system. It's best realised in version 3.0 of the Amiga OS. And you'll find that you can simply set what you want certain key presses of the keyboard to do. For example, run an application, cycle through your open windows, even run an AREX script, which we're going to cover in a later video. So for example, I can set my F1 key to open multi-view, or perhaps my F2 key to open calculator. As you can see, commodities are super useful and super enhancing for your experience of using your Amiga operating system. Again, I can only reiterate that when these commodities are programmed correctly, there is nothing that is hacky about the way that they work. Amiga OS 2.0 and above was designed to work like this. So, what are some examples of useful commodities? Well, I definitely use Click to Front, which comes built in with the Amiga operating system. An F key has its uses as well. In the video description, you'll find a list of some of the commodities that I find useful that you can download from Aminet. You'll need to make sure that you have the LHA extraction utility installed on your Amiga. There are plenty of instructions of how to do this on the internet, so just Google, or use your preferred search engine, how to install LHA on an Amiga. There'll be plenty of tutorials. Maybe I'll create one one day for you. Here you can see that I'm using LHA through the Amiga shell to extract cycle to menu. So all you need to do is open up an Amiga shell and you need to CD or change directory to where you have your LHA archive of this commodity that you have downloaded from Aminet. I can use the info command to find out what my device name is for my work partition for example. Here I can either use work space 3.1 which is the name of my work partition ensuring it's enclosed in double quotes and then putting a colon at the end of the device name to cd to it by its name or having used the info tool I can use cd space dh1 colon enter on the keyboard and it will change to that partition and then cd to the folder that contains my downloaded commodities. In this case, I have a folder called Commodities. You can find out what your folders are by just simply typing dir space dirs, so dir space dirs, press enter on the keyboard and it will list the folders that are in your current CD location. Here I can see that Cycle to Menu is called in this particular way, so I can type in the command to extract the archive into my RAM disk because I'm not going to need these files going onwards. So what does this commodity do? Well, you know those pop-up gadgets you have on your Amiga and that you have to cycle through by click, click, click to get to the right option? Well this will introduce a pop-up menu over the broader part of the gadget. So now when you click on the biggest part of the cycle gadget you'll get a pop-up menu which makes them infinitely more usable. I also have some other cool commodities here. I also use Magic Menu. This allows you to have pop-up menus anywhere on your Amiga screen. So instead of having to go up to the top of the screen, right-click and pull down the option from there, I can just right-click wherever I am. So I can click my icon, right-click, and there it is. My icons menu is at my fingertips, making it so much quicker to use. And this works across pretty much all applications you'll find on the Amiga. And finally, another super useful tool that I use all the time is Depth Menu. You know how sometimes you can have a lot of Amiga screens open and again clicking through them all just takes time? Well Depth Menu allows you to right click on a depth gadget either on a screen or on a window on your workbench screen to have a little pop-up menu that will allow you to click through to the exact screen you want without all those presses of your mouse button. It just makes things so much easier to use. I'm not going to go into the exact configuration for all of these items because most of them come with excellent documentation and certainly the ones that I have linked to in the video description have excellent Amiga guides on how to configure them. 
perhaps I'll go through them in greater detail in the future. But I just wanted to point out what commodities are and how they can truly enhance your usage of the Amiga operating system. They are not hacks in the most cases. Some of the badly programmed ones are a bit hacky, but by their very nature, Commodore designed the Amiga operating system to be extended like this. And they are another awesome Amiga OS feature that very few people actually talk about these days. So I hope you found that interesting. And I guess that all remains for me to say is see you soon. Peace. So it's come to that part of the video where I mention that I'm on Patreon. From as little as $2 a month, you can get early access to content, exclusive artwork through the post, and name mention on videos, as well as tips that I don't publish to the public. You can find a link in the video description below. Your subscription to my channel will also help me ensure that I can bring the latest content here from Japan.